He's back again. Oh. I think I love retro games. I think I love retro games. I think I love retro games. It's me, Jace at Retro Games, and today we are going to talk about one of my favourite all-time consoles, the Vectrex. Now, the Vectrex is unlike any other console. It has a built-in screen, a CRT screen. It uses a single gun to fire polygons at the screen, making 3D games easy. It's got fantastic arcade sound. It came out in 1982. It's a beast. It is a beast of a console and there's not many retro gamers who wouldn't say the Vectrex is one of their favourites and I am definitely in that gang. Um, this is a masterpiece. Retro Facts. Created by John Ross and his colleagues while tinkering with TV parts in a Los Angeles warehouse, the Vectrex would become licensed in 1981 by USA toaster manufacturer GCE. Only a year after its release, GCE would be bought by toy company Milton Bradley, who swapped to their MB branding for the UK and European Vectrex release. The Vectrex takes its name from the word vector, a mathematical shape made of dots, lines and curves. The console remains the only games machine ever released to solely use vector graphics. While the imaging unit is different, the cathode ray tube display inside the Vectrex is standard and can be found in several small black and white television sets at the time, though turned on its side. The Motorola processor at the heart of the Vectrex is not only the same CPU used in Dragon 32 and TRS-80 computers, but also the legendary Robotron and Defender coin-ops. And there aren't many consoles like this. This is a polygon first console. No sprites, just lines, dots and lines, dots and lines. And the games that we get on here, they're, some are similar. Some will say, oh yeah, but all Vectrex games are the same, but no, they're not. Um, they're play for points, they are amazing, colorful with the screens. Oh, let me take you through. And this is the Vectrex stand. Um, this was, Originally from Spain, you'll see there's a bit of Spanish writing on the top. Um, and it was used at the launch of the MB version of the Vectrex in Spain. Um, very lucky to pick this up from a fellow collector around 10 years ago. Um, but it certainly is the perfect home for the Vectrex console. Now the Vectrex is heavy. It came with a vinyl carry case, it was an optional extra, but it's not the sort of thing you want to take about with you. It's the kind of thing you want to leave sitting on your shelf ready or on your magical display stand. Um, so it's ready to play at any moment. Now it has a built-in game and I think that probably the best way to tell you about my feelings of the Vectrex is to tell you about when I first ever saw one. Um, well, I didn't actually see it first, that's the strange thing. Um, picture John Lewis, 1982. I'd seen a Spectrum, didn't own one yet, and I go up to the toy flip, to, to the toy floor, and I can hear this sound, just this amazing, zappy, wow, arcade machine sound. And I'm looking around, and in the corner there's this huge huddle of I don't know, 30 or 40 kids, all yakking over each other. And I could not see what they were doing. I could not see, so I had to muscle my way through, barge through, uh, and find out what they do. No chance of actually getting on the controller, but then I first laid my eyes on the Vectrex, and I thought, oh my God, that is an arcade machine at home. That is an actual arcade machine. And at the time, it was like 150 pounds, which was a lot of money, but the big advantage is you didn't need a TV, whereas the Spectrum I was saving up for, I'd have to commandeer me mum and dad's TV in their bedroom, or, you know, play it in black and white, which is no fun. Though, you know, nothing wrong playing with games in black and white. 
and the Vectrex without the screens on is black and white. The plastic coloured screen overlays not only added vibrancy and a unique feel to each of the 28 Vectrex titles, they secretly also reduced the noticeable screen flicker. The highly rated inbuilt game Mindstorm famously crashes when you get to level 13. Those who wrote to complain received the super rare Mindstorm 2 cartridge. The game is actually the same, but bug free. In Japan, Bandai picked up the license and released their own branded version of the Ventrex. The Kuso Kusen is believed to have sold less than 50,000 units. With its own light pen and unique 3D headset, the Vectrex was way ahead of its time. The all-colour Vectrex 2, planned for release in 1985, had to be scrapped when falling sales forced MB to pull the plug. Game production was stopped too, leaving rare prototypes like Mailplane and Tour de France tantalisingly close to completion. Okay, now let's talk about the actual Vectrex machine. Um, as you see, it's got a blue screen on the front here. This is the blue screen that came with it. It's for the game Mindstorm. Um, a version of Asteroids, but we'll show you that in a sec. Um, as you'll see, the controller which clips into the front and then comes out. Four buttons and an analog stick well before the N64 and PlayStation DualShock. This had an analog stick, so you could really control, particularly on some games, um, Hyper Chase brings to mind, you really can position your, your sprite or your car in that case exactly where you want. Um, Fantastic. Uh, to be honest, without the analog stick, this would have been a different console. I don't think it would have felt the same with a with a sort of D-pad. Yeah. Anyway, let's turn it on and show you the inbuilt game, Mindstorm. I mean, you might have all seen this a hundred times, but it's quite loud. It's quite loud. Here we go. Theme tune. That starts all Vectrex games. Okay. Now that creepy intro to Mindstorm. Now we'll press the button to start it. I'm not going to be able to play it facing you, but we'll put it on. Uh, and you just see the ship goes down, he drops some stars, um, and then you're in. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I plugged it in the wrong control. <sighs> It's plugged in the wrong controller port. What a plum. Oh, so you can see this. Two joy joypad ports underneath. Not that many people had the second joypad, and there's not many games that use it. Okay, so replicating replicating the uh, sound that I listened to in, um, in John Lewis. This is all I could hear. Well, maybe they'd actually press the fire button, which I didn't. What a plum. Sounds more zappy. Oh my goodness, even from this oblique angle, I'm having fun. Uh, every one of the little dots in the star field is actually one of the things you've got to blow up. And as you blow them up, you get smaller versions. First level is very easy, they don't shoot back. There is a spaceship that will come on and deliver more dots in a second. We'll see. Oh. There it is, got him. See, I can finish the first level of the game, just to prove it. Okay, now number two. The uh, cross-shaped ones, they, they drift towards you. Um, so you really want to get those first, because when they shoot down, you know, like little tiny crosses come out, you see that they're coming. Yeah. Now, of course, you've got the classic Defender-inspired hyperspace button, which I didn't use, but I should have. Uh, let's try again. Great sound. Oh, oh that's the house first one, I just thought I'd show you. Let's leave a big gun. Leave a big gun coming. Oh, I, I see I'm useless. 
So yeah, a simple version of Asteroids, as you can see, that is the game that comes built into all Vectrex controls, Vectrex, Vectrex consoles, but it does take additional cartridges. I've got some cartridges here, some quite interesting ones, Polar Express. Pole Position, that's an official Atari um, licensed game. Uh, Star Castle, and these three games didn't get a European release, which is very, they were the last ones, but they are three of the best. Um, we'll cover them at some point in the future. I'm thinking there's going to be three parts maybe for this Vectrex um, video series because there's so much to say. Um, today we're going to cover the original games. Um, we've shown some hardware, um, but there's the light pen adapter, there's the amazing incredible 3D headset, um, and then there is more games released for the Vectrex since it became defunct, since it disappeared, um, than there is, than there are original ones. Um, so many amazing homebrew games for the Vectrex, such a big cult following. It's the king of consoles. Before I carry on rambling, let's check out some of the games. Fortress of Nazod. One of the best names for a game ever made. A little bit of uh, familiar music there. It, like most games in the Vectrex, it is a shooter, but this is good because you're bouncing bullets and... I am terrible at games. Spike, now this is the first talking. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful tune. Um, this is the first game to have speech on the Vectrex. Yes, I think I think the uh, subtitles do help. You're right. Uh, so basically, this is this is the Vectrex platform game. It's the big one. Okay, it's like you're doing a dance. Darn it! This is the Vectrex's answer to Pac-Man. Uh, more jazzy music to start. So this is a game I can actually. Understand. They're kind of like big claw guys. I mean, they're a little more like Pac Man than you are. The thing's chasing you. You're like a little hoover. But it's, it's, it's all here, I tell you. And then again, in these little boxes. Oh, now I've got the power pill. It's like the power pill. And I'm eating them. This is Hyper Chase. This is a racing game. I love racing games. It's got a great engine noise. You wait, you wait till you hear it. Three. Oh, oh my goodness. I've never Oi! It's super sensitive. I forgot. All right. Change gear, man. Change. Picking up pace. Picking up the pace. Oh, it's a gorgeous thing. Look at this game. One little switch on the joystick and you're out. Oh. Web warp. This is the Vectrex's answer to Tempest. Oh no, Web Wars on the game, but the UK version was called Web Warp. Oh, this is not Tempest. Oh, no. Oh, You're a bird. Oh, I am useless at this as well. Flip a pinball. Surely even I can play pinball. Classic pinball music. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Launch the ball. Launch the ball. Oh, not press balls. Oh, come on, Daddy. Yeah. Heads up. This is called Heads Up on the uh, screen. It's actually soccer football. Perfectly tight. And as you can see, my team is highlighted in bright colours. Well, colours. Well, you know. Artistic license, not really colours. 
This is me dribbling the ball like a hero. I'm going to pass it. Yeah, pass. It. I missed. Oh. Oh, they've got it, they've got it. Hang on, they're going the same way. Oh, I thought it was tackling them. Come on, go on, go on. Oh. They scored. Now this game is actually called Rip Off. Can you imagine? I don't want this game, it's, it's Rip Off. Right. It's a bit like Defender, I think they're going to try and come and take our little triangles. Yeah, I got you mate. Leave it out. Oh. oh no. Oh, straight into me. They're taking me, they're taking them, they're ripping me off. That's how it works, you see, they're ripping me off. useless. Okay, this is Armour Attack, one of the best games on the Vetrix. Even includes a two-player game, if you've got two controllers. If you're lucky enough to have two controllers, you can be two little jeeps trying to save yourselves from the tanks and helicopters. Oh, he's gonna... Ooh. I've hit him. I've hit him. He's... Uh, I've got to watch out for the choppers. Decide that now. Got him. Oh, he got me at the same time. That theme is pretty berserk too. Everyone loves berserk. Walk along, shoot robots. Yeah. Yeah, look like a big Yeah. Oh, there's one more I missed him. He's hiding in this little thing. Get out of it. I'm sure it was a hit then. Star Wars, that music, isn't it? You can tell that this game, uh, Starship, is very Star Wars inspired. Oh, that's a warp gate, you can travel through that and go to a new area, but for now, we are looking for a bad guy. This is the closest thing you'll get on the Vectrex to the uh, official Atari Star Wars coin up. Oh, oh, he's getting me cut off! Oh, I missed that. Cracked windscreen, I always love that. You're definitely going to be dead in space with a cracked windscreen. I believe this is known as Star Trek in America. We couldn't afford the license, then we couldn't afford the license. So Starship in the UK and Europe. Sector 2! Yeah, we got to Sector 2. Cosmic Chasm, it's one of those strange games which as a kid I didn't know the word chasm and we used to call it Cosmic Chasm. Um, so in my head I still see Cosmic Chasm. Come on then, let's go. So that's the map. You go from room to room, clearing it out of bad guys, trying to get to the centre before the time runs out so you can... And take out the nuclear reactor. We've got to do the drill. And a drill in the front. Drill through that. Right, we're out. We're out next room. Oh, I remember now the drill. Oh, I was trying to be sneaky. Didn't work. 
from the coin op, the classic scramble. Yeah, we love scramble. Jazzy music. Oh, listen to that. We're going to take out the fuel. The little fuel boxes, and then we get some extra fuel. Got it. Got the fuel. Yeah, clear the way. Let's get them on sound. Yeah, now you know how we can play. Yeah, get the feel on this one. Now we're going to have feel, come on. Second level, yeah, go! Oh. Okay. And this one is Solar Quest. Incredible theme. Um, this is inspired by Gravatar, with everything drifting towards the sun in the middle. Whoa. I think I just used up all my bombs. Yes, there is a similarity to Mindstorm in a lot of the Vetrix releases, so I'll give you that. But that doesn't mean they're not fun. And I'd, I'd rather play simple space games like this. Than, you know, Assassin's Creed. Ah, oh, that's just me, I'm sorry. Assassin's Creed! Ah, uh, this is Bedlam, obviously uh, named after the Victorian Asylum. Right now, they're all gonna come at me from the side. I've got lasers, don't worry. It's a spinny, tempest kind of. Shoot them before they get to you, job. It's a lovely screen display of design on this one. Whee! Oh, this is like a, a, a crow's foot. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Yes! Oh, it's the full cat's bottom. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, he's surviving, he's surviving. He's looking like a professional player. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at my fingers there. Oh! Firing like a maniac. Starhawk. Now, Starhawk is a is a really good game. Slightly Star Wars influenced crater shooter. Yeah, you're in, you're in the you're in the bottom of the Death Star. Yeah. It's, a, it's a sight. Space Wars. <sighs> More Star Wars influence. One of the few games that was um, two player at the same time. Uh, I don't even know what happened. That's a familiar tune. Right. I, I, I think it's a yeah. It's a one on one battle game. He's, he's absolutely, this is the computer guy. It's a two player at the same time battle. Like Solar Storm with a star in the middle. Uh, but the computer guy seems really good. He's 3 0. Come on. He just shot me straight. I didn't even see where I was. Oh, he's evil. I got him. I actually got him. Welcome back to me talking about the Vetrex. Now, there's a funny thing about the Vetrex. It's one of the few games that Retro Games has sold consoles, which has actually kind of gone down in value. Um, 
Back in 1995, when we first launched our GameFinder Extra catalogue, you hadn't been able to buy a Vectrex in the UK, well, or anywhere else really, um, for over 10 years. It didn't particularly last long in the shops. It wasn't very popular. It didn't sell mega numbers. Um, so when we made it available again, I'd built up a bit of a stockpile, maybe 20 or 30 Vectrexes, put it in our catalogue. Oh my God, everybody was crazy for it. Shot the price up. Before you knew it, we were selling it for 300, 350 pounds for a Vectrex. And that's kind of the money you'd expect to pay now, maybe less than that if it's unboxed. Um, well, maybe more than that if it is boxed, let's be honest. We all like the boxes and we don't like the boxes more than the things though. Not here. I know some of you guys like the boxes better than the things, but we like the things better than the boxes, and that's the way it is. Okay, now, the problem with shipping Vectrexes, I mean, I have experience of this, shipping 20 or 30 Vectrexes all over the world. There was a big rush for them in Japan. I sent several to Japan. They are so fragile. They've got a glass screen, if I take that off. It's completely glass, single gun, and it's, it's held on with plastic lugs. A good massive shake or a drop and that just detaches itself, pushes itself into the circuitry and the game never works again. And in the end, I became so broken hearted by how many Vectrexes we had reported as smashed and destroyed. Not so much about the losing the money, but the thought that these rare consoles that I've managed to accumulate were just ending up getting smashed to pieces and thrown in a skip. I, I, we, we stopped selling them. We stopped selling Vectrexes and the price went crazy. We very rarely sell Vectrexes now, and if we if we do sell one, we do encourage people to come and pick them up. Um, lots more to say about the Vectrex, but we want some facts. Retro facts. In the UK, Woolworths and other toy chains help clear thousands of unsold consoles from warehouses. Selling the base console for as little as £30, while complete setups, including the UK only vinyl carry case and around 10 to 15 Vectrex games, could be found for as little as £100. With most of the half a million Vectrex consoles sold at a discount, Milton Bradley struggled with millions of dollars in losses. After 124 years, the family owned toy company was finally sold to Hasbro. In 1988, a new handheld version of the Vectrex console was prototyped, only for the project to get cancelled when Nintendo released the Game Boy. Despite several developers designing a new version of the console, thanks to licensing constraints, a smaller desktop model is growing ever less likely. The unique style and gameplay of the Vectrex has earned is a thriving homebrew scene, with over 150 new games titles released since its demise. So here you can see the cartridge slot, uh, you just, they're very, very smart, solid cartridges. They just push into the side, go have the power off to do it, um, and then you start the game and you've got the next game in. At the rear of the machine there is one control and it's called brightness. Um, and fiddle with this, I mean generally it, you get it in the perfect position, you never have to move it again. It's a bit like contrast on the microvision, you've got to get it perfect and then it's great. Go too bright and you can see, you can kind of see what the Vectrex is thinking because you can see the light. We could, we could show you, let me show you. Let's go, let's go, let's go with the brightness control. So uh, I haven't fiddled with it yet. You can see, let's, uh, it goes, and now if I, you can see, you get, you can, I don't know if you can pick that up. You can see the lines, there's like little lines where it's done its calculations, there's a little grid up to the one. They're like background graphics. Like the lower, the lower brightness artifacts that is required to operate the game. You see there's a center dot. The center, there's lines spiraling out to each star. Each star in this game turns into an alien. Um, yeah, it's quite fascinating. But if I turn it back down, they, they disappear completely. Uh, or you can, you can turn, like all controls, if you turn it right down, you get nothing. Um, I always find that strange that you would have a control go right to zero. Um, yeah, so that's the brightness control. I mean, some people don't like the screens. Um, I don't like games which don't have screens. A lot of the new games, um, the, the homebrew and the, the newly made games don't have screens, but they are so much better with them. 
They kind of make the whole game package. You get the manual, the screen, the box, and the boxes are lovely, they're all uniform. And even the new games, lots of reproduction games, they, they all have the matching style box, oversized big cardboard boxes. Um, and they usually have a, a bit of advice on the controls, also on the, on the transparent screen, and they're brilliant to look through because everything looks blue, which is fabulous. Um, and I like them, they just says there's a couple of little lugs that they slot in. on the back. And I'm, Okay, they made it a black and white machine, but the way the technology worked, it had to be single gun. I mean, it breaks inside of Etrex, a single gun whizzing around to all the pixels. It's like a massive race, it's just spinning around, drawing all the graphics with a single gun. Um, Something like 10,000 volts, someone told me. And they never ever open up a Vectrex, you will get electrocuted instantly. Um, which makes it even more sad when they die because they're very, very hard to repair. The controller, again, it's just lovely. It's, it's got such a lovely feel to it. I'm surprised they don't make a new version of this. Like a Vectrex controller for PlayStation or, you know, for Xbox. It just feels like such a beautiful... Mm. Um, so, for today's video, that's about it. Just a basic, just covering the basics of the classic Vectrex GCE MBE. It, MBE, yeah, it deserves an MBE. So, Your Majesty, if you're looking, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you are, I think the Vectrex deserves an MBE. And on that crazy moment, let's end it. Keep on retro gaming, guys! Bye! Retro Games says thank you. Say the Queen watches this. It's just ridiculous.